your source for everything paranormal, Para-X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Coming to you live and direct from my subterranean lair, my name is Ra, and I'm here to awaken the dormant particles that are spiraling inside your DNA. So come with me as we go further down the mystical spiral of life. It's Spiral Radio, where each and every week we unveil the different shades of you, the different shades of me, until we all vibrate the same frequency. I want to welcome out tonight one of our favorite guests on Spiral Radio. He's a UFO expert. He's been in the field for many years, and it's a true pleasure to have him on every time. His name is Jorge Martin. He's from Puerto Rico, and you can see him on my Facebook for Spiral Radio or at the paraxradionetwork.com, and you can see certain cases that we'll be discussing tonight on there, and also the amazing picture that he has of an encounter that his son had with, um, his son is a, a policeman and had the encounter with this flying reptile-like dinosaur being that I can't wait to discuss and hear about. And um, I want to welcome the Spiral Radio, Jorge Martin. It's a pleasure to have you, Jorge. Hey, good night, bro. Yes, it's, uh, you know, an hour is going to uh, fly by so fast. So uh, it's really, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about certain guests. And you're one of them because, like, you have spent, you know, much of your your life and uh, since, what, the 60s, 70s maybe, even uh, recording these encounters and happening all over um, Puerto Rico and, and, you know, all over the world, basically. And um, I, the, this most recent one that you've had been reporting about and even you drew that amazing picture that I'm going to post here in the chat room and I have it on my Facebook is of uh, actually you said your son had this encounter as he was yeah. being he was a police officer as well I mean I would love to get you know explain if you can explain how much of this encounter you can actually explain because it was your son that would be really great to the finest detail and, and really try to you know capture the moment for our audience you know, listening, because I think this is a really, um, truly one of the most amazing encounters someone can have as being a human, and it, it shocks the system, it paralyzes the body, and, you know, I would really love to hear, you know, your firsthand, you know, experiences with this, being it, it's your, your son who had the encounter. Mm -hmm. Many people have had uh, that type of encounters here in Puerto Rico. So it's, 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 it's been common. It's, it's, I mean, has it been more common uh, and during the, the last few years, or has it been for hundreds of years? No, this has been happening, well, 
that I know of, okay? Uh, I would tell you that uh, since the 70s, there have been many reports of this type of, of creature in different parts of the island, but the media here hardly dis uh, discuss anything about it, you know. These are uh, testimonies given by witnesses, serious people all over the island who have uh, had encounters with the creatures. A different type of creature, and that, that's part of the weirdness of this whole situation, you know. It's something, like you say, like a fringe aspect of this type of phenomenon here in Puerto Rico, you know. Where do these creatures come from? Where do they go? What are they? Well, we don't know. You think it's possible they could be coming from within the Earth? Well, I don't know. Uh, I have uh, two, uh, how would I say, two theories about it, okay? That's possible. Maybe they're coming from inside the, the, the Earth, but uh, we're here in Puerto Rico. Yeah. But apart from that, you know, in many occasions, these creatures have been seen together with UFOs in the same areas at the same time. Uh, either they are coming with them, we don't know. And, and at the same time, in areas where portals appear, you know, dimensional portals. This is happening more and more here in the area of Puerto Rico. These openings in the sky and in land in certain areas. Uh, these holes appear, uh, illuminated areas. The, the matter disappears in the whole area, trees, uh, soil, land, everything. And yes. then you see something very big down there, you know, the, the, the soil dematerializes. Yeah, and that's the that's this kind of where... Portal. And that's kind of where my research seen, is going to, yeah. UFOs going into this place, or coming out from this place, and also creatures. So maybe that's what's really going on. That's interesting, because that's exactly where, you know, my beliefs and, and my research is, is going towards as well, that they're coming through these interdimensional gateways... And I think mm -hmm. that within the Earth that they might exist as well, even even under the water, Jorge. I think that you know these things can That's happen correct. even from within the water. And um, do you th did, it, did this being look like um, it was amphibious as well, or did it look like it was just purely coming from the sky, being it had those massive wings? No, it, it was a flying creature. You know? Yeah, it was a flying creature. Was you would say like it looked like a gargoyle, according to most of the witnesses. Okay. And this, but but a gargoyle that was like eight nine feet tall, right? According to my son and his uh, fellow policemen, uh, it was between seven and eight feet tall. That's that's remarkable. And it said, uh, like it had a reptile like face with those pointy ears. And I mean, how 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 close was he to this? And and where like. How did it? How did it come about? Like, was was he in the patrol car? What? Where did it just? Where? How did it? How did it end up just showing up? Like, where okay. was he? Let me explain you the case. Yeah. Uh, my, my son used to work with the San Juan Porto, with San Juan Municipal Police. San Juan is the capital city of Puerto Rico, as you know, because you have been here in Puerto Rico. Uh, the he was a sergeant with the municipal police, and he was at the. Impacto San Juan headquarters in the city of San Juan in Santurce. Uh, it was about 10, 11 o'clock in the night, and they heard this very loud sound of something heavy that fell on the roof of the of the of the place. Wow! So uh, he, together with other five policemen, ran to the ceiling to see what what was that was going on over there, you know. And they took their rifles and their guns with them. They were armed. And once they reached the, the ceiling, uh, the roof of the building, they encountered this thing in front of them, okay, at a distance of about six feet away from them, you know. Six uh, feet? It seemed about six feet from them, yes. Wow. And it would seem to be eating something that was in, on, you know, in the ceiling, on top of the ceiling. He was crouching and eating something. They couldn't see what it was. But then when, when, when they came out from the stairs and stood in front of it, it stood up. Okay, that's when they really saw what it was, and they were just terrified, you know, uh, frozen, as, as you said before in a former, in, a, in another conversation we had, had about the incident. Uh, they all were armed, but they wouldn't do anything. They didn't dare to take their guns out and do anything about it or shoot at it. And the creature just stood there looking at them with some with very 
a bright red eye, and they were looking at the creature, but neither the creature nor them would move at all, you know. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, uh, it spread these very large uh, bat-like wings and flew away very fast into the sky. Uh, and then they saw that what the creature was sitting was a cat that was there, lying there, you know, on top of the ceiling. Uh, he told me it was about seven to eight feet tall, very strong, with a more or less humanoid shape uh, in his body, except for, for the legs that were, you know, curved like those of the of a lizard. Or he told me, he said, hey, Dad, uh, have you seen the movies of the werewolves? Yet? You see these arched legs, you know, in their feet? But something like that, okay? It was all skin, no scales at all, all skin, fine skin, uh, dark, uh, gray, almost black in color from head to toes, uh, very strong arms uh, uh, with claws in both feet and, and hands, and these uh, large wings that look like a bat's wing, he said. That's intense. Did he, like, could he, like, smell the creature or, like... Uh, no, it didn't smell bad at all, you know. Everything... Uh, it just happened just like that, you know, the creature stood there, looked at them, they looked at, at the creature, then the creature left, okay, after several minutes, and that's it. That's amazing, Jorge. Um, now, I'm looking at this creature now, and I just posted it in the chat room, and everybody listening out there on the web, you can go to paraxradionetwork.com, and I have it up in the chat room, it's on Facebook, it's by Jorge Martin himself. Um, it's copyright mm -hmm. 2017. And That's an art I made uh, from his uh, recollection of the incident. Okay? And wow. And, and, he and, and me it, everything, it, the details, and I made an art out of it. Yeah, so I have some questions now. I'm looking at this picture, and I see it's basically like a, a purplish tint with, with a... You know that gargoyle face, massive in size, and and there's a a dead animal laying in front. Did did it have a dead animal with it that it dropped? Yes, that was what he was eating. It was a cat. Wow. A cat. Wow. There have been other other incidents similar to that one in different parts of the island, where they were seen either eating cats or or birds or different type of animals. You know, but small animals, and and it, this is interesting. This aspect is interesting, right? They never hurt people. It is as if they knew what people are and animals are. You know, the difference between us and the animals, common animals. They never hurt people. They just stand there, you look at them, uh, and they leave. That's it. Wow, so you do... And they seem, they seem to behave in an intelligent uh, manner, I would say, according to the witnesses. Wow, so like they 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 have uh, probably um, a strong sense of maybe a, even psychic power where they can read you know read people's moves and read read people's intuitions and and know movements ahead of time, and maybe they're they're some kind of being from another dimension where they're pushing themselves into matter or into this physical plane and opening up some kind of dimensional portal and then while they're on this physical plane they need to also feed themselves and consume and they grab small game and, and go up to a rooftop to stay out of sight to eat and that's where your son came in the mix and saw that okay yeah well there have been many such cases so the security guards who work by night because these creatures are mostly seen by night okay uh, either they are nocturnal or they do that to protect themselves you know from us uh, they tend to come out more mostly by night now, uh, now, being that he was uh, six feet away, did he see the eyes of this creature? Did he see that? Yes, they, they saw everything in detail. So what, uh, what kind of slits? The eyes, were, the, the eyes were red and bright. Wow, that's almost similar to like the Mothman. But the Mothman had no neck. Only yeah. two. Yeah, I but like the red eyes. The red eyes are similar, so maybe it is not On top of the, you know, the, the arms and everything that... And, yeah, and the, no, the right. wings were more like like uh, feathers. These ones here in the island are more like the bat wings. Yeah, no. I, what I what I was recalling is uh, the the red eyes, very similar to the Mothman. So maybe it is mm -hmm. nocturnal, like like the Mothman is said to be. 
I mean, uh, it's interesting because when when something even even being a, a a police officer and a trained professional, that when 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 someone sees something like this, no matter if you have trained, you know, you know skills or whatever, that the body just gets immobilized from fear and it just overcomes you. And it, yes, it, it, yes, there's yes. there's there's even a story of a uh, like Af. In Afghanistan, these Iraqi soldiers encountered this huge giant, and they had they were special op soldiers that had great training. And as soon as they saw this giant beast, they they just got immobilized with fear and couldn't move. You know, so it, it regardless of your training, when when something happens like this, it's like you you, you get paralyzed. Yes, we're talking about human beings, you know, who have their yeah. their normal reactions. You know, their emotions get affected. Uh, my son said that uh, uh, they just wouldn't move. You know. They were in shock. That's why they were seeing. They couldn't believe what their eyes was, were seeing, you know. And later on, they told their superiors down at the headquarters. But they were told not to talk about this publicly because it may affect their careers, you know, in the police force. Wow. So, so has, they didn't. So how long ago was this? No, this was in 1996. But since then, there have been many more sightings of this creature and encounters, Okay. For example, we have uh, the encounter Mr. Renaldo Rodriguez and his wife had in the town of Guayama. That's it is in the southwestern part of Puerto Rico. And uh, recently he was going in his car by night at 2 a.m. in the morning to, uh, to his home in an urbanization uh, there in Guayama. And suddenly his wife was driving the car. He was in the passenger seat. And he saw something fly by in front of the car, you know, at a distance. Yeah. He believed that maybe it was a bat or something and left it there. But when he got to the to the, the light in the road and they had to stop, there was a house at his right. And he looked toward the building and there in, on top of the ceiling of the house was this creature. What he describes is very similar to, my, to what my son and his fellow policemen saw. Similar in all, in every sense, okay? And the creature was looking straight at him. He was in the car. The creature was on top of the, the house uh, with his red eyes, the, the big wings, uh, the color of the skin. Everything is similar, okay, and very big in size. And uh, then he, his wife continued uh, driving down the road. He kept looking at, at the creature, and the creature was looking straight at him all the time until they, 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 they got away from the sight, you know. Uh, and there have been many such incidents, you know, in, in security guards in different parts of San Turce, San Juan, and other places have encountered these creatures by night. Uh, there was an incident in which one security guard reacted and threw uh, his club, you know, his uh, security club they use, yeah. La Macana, as they call them in Puerto Rico, yeah. uh, toward the creature, and the creature just grabbed it in the air with his hand, his hand and, and, and then flew away. And many such incidents, you know. That you know, you got my attention when uh, you started talking about the red eyes and and how the the being is staring right at them. I mean, I'm wondering, Jorge, how much time is actually passing when they're looking in this creature's eyes? You think it's somehow enchanting people, or or you know, um, making them almost paralyzed in a way where they're like. That's interesting, that question that you're doing, they're making, because most witnesses say that the, the eyes seem to be almost hypnotic, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean, they, some they, kind of they, hypnotism. They are bright, red in color, and when they look straight at you, you feel as if numbed, you know, uh, you can move. I'm thinking in that some these... cases, people are able to react, but in most cases, they just stand there. And the creature just look at them and then leave. They they won't hurt the people. Yeah, I think because maybe they didn't make the direct eye contact and get lowered in in, in that hypnotic mm -hmm. uh, feeling. I'm thinking too that there's more to this. You know, this is this is weird, but it is the same thing as with the other type of cases that we have here in Puerto Rico about the so-called anomalous biological entities, the the, the 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 creatures involved with the cattle mutilations and animal mutilations here for many years. Okay, the so-called chupacabras. Yeah, uh, they had the same red, bright eyes, luminous eyes, and the effect was the same. Whenever people looked at them, they felt numb. They they felt as as if paralyzed, and that's what they believed that they produced on the animals to to be able to get to the animals and do what they wanted to do with them. 
Yeah, and I'm thinking that these aren't just um, as random as an encounter as we think they are. I think that maybe, you know... I think, I agree with you. I think they are, they want people to see them. Yeah. For some reason, we don't yeah. know. And I think that they're feeding right before the encounter because they're gaining energy for that experience. And they're, they're you know, they, they have to take some kind of nutrients while they're in this physical plane. And then while they're hypnotizing and looking at the, be the, the human, some kind of energy exchange or something is taking place where it's not just a random encounter. I feel there's more to this. I think so. Yeah. I think there's something to that too. Yeah. And, and you said before that you mentioned that they were Saurian. Now explain the Saurian. Oh, no. What he meant by the Saurian was that there are other types of sightings and encounters here that have to do with creatures that, uh, according the to the are very similar to pterodactyls. Yeah. Pterosaurs, you know, the flying reptiles from, from, yeah. the, from the prehistoric times. Uh, that's what they look like, according to the witnesses. They have made drawings, etc. We have been showing them pictures, uh, and they say, this is what I saw. You know, and it's, it's weird, but it's very interesting. Uh, some of the fair cases of this type of fish that we have were, were in Vieques, you know, the island municipality in the east of Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, by the year 2000, there were several sightings of this creature there. At first, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't believe them, you know, but I had to go there and talk to witnesses. Uh, and then I started thinking, hey, there's something going on here, you know. And the descriptions were similar everywhere, and they were talking about pterodactyls, you know. There, there's no other way to call them, because that's what they, they are according to what they saw, and what they drew and everything. Uh, but again, and this is, this is strange and interesting, right? they wouldn't hurt people, okay? If you see the, the movies and talk to the, to the uh, paleontologists, etc., uh, they would say that these creatures were savage, you know, that they were hunters and scavengers, and they uh, attacked other animals to eat. They were carnivorous, but these creatures have never attacked anyone, you know, so here in Puerto Rico, and I have several cases, me and my, myself and other people here in Puerto Rico who are studying this, this situation too, and they have never attacked anyone. Uh, they, I have only one case, and this is very interesting. I know you will find it interesting, right? Yeah. Because it was, uh, it was in the... I love 19, this. It was in 1978 in the area of the town of Manatee. You That's know the where year of my birth. That's the year of my uh, birth. <laughs> yes, because... Uh, and you know where this is in Manatee because uh, you have been here in Puerto Rico, okay? So these uh, three young men, Vicente Vega and two friends of his, were driving down a road in sector uh, Cordoba Davila in Manatee, that's a mountain se yeah. sector of, of the town yeah. of Manatee in the north part of the island. And uh, all of a sudden, they heard this very loud screech, you know, on top of them, on top of the car. They were driving in a, a, a small a Renault. A, how do you say, van or or una guaguita? A small car, a Renault car, yeah. and they heard very this very loud screech, and all of a sudden, this on both sides of the car, on the both of the windows of the, the on the front, this large cloth appeared and clenched to to the to the top of the car, and the car got up from the road in three different locations, you know, and fell oh. down again, as if something or someone was trying to lift it up, you know. Uh, they became very nervous. And looked out, and what they saw was a flying pterodactyl. Oh, know? my God. So uh, they tried to get out, and at that moment, uh, the creature left, flying away, you know, and they were able to see what they saw was a very large pter pterodactyl-type creature flying away, and it entered a cave in a, in a, a high place in a mountain there in sector Cordoba Davila. Okay. Uh, this is one case I didn't know about. I knew about it recently because I interviewed these people for other things that they had witnesses pertaining to the UFO situation here in Puerto Rico, in that area of Manatee. And during the, the interview, this came out, okay? And he told me everything. And then he told me that uh, later on he went to the site again 
with his friends and visited this man who lived uh, at the side of the road, a man who had a, a livestock, and he had many, many sheep and goats, and told him, if, if told, they asked him if, if he had ever seen something like that, a big bear or something weird, and said, ah, you're talking about the that big thing that looks like a bear, <laughs> uh, that looks like a bear, very, very big. Say said, yes, uh, everyone here has seen it, and whenever... By night, after six o'clock, I have to 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 take all my sheep and goats and put them under inside of, of, of the ranch he had there because they, it comes and takes them away. So I have to protect them because it comes and take away the the goats and the sheep or whatever. So the man knew and he he knew that this was coming up from that cave in Cordoba Davila sector. Uh, it's a pity that I know about this now, uh, because by then, if I had known about this, maybe a group could have been uh, made and we could have investigated this case and see what was there, you know. But right now, we don't know. We're trying to go and check if at least there are bones or something, something that may uh, let us uh, know what was happening in that area, in that specific cave uh, pertaining to all of this. That's amazing, and and they had like that that hammer head kind of like shape to Everything. their head. Everything. That's what. That's why he said this is. I know this sounds incredible, Martin. He said, Vicente, but it was pterodactyl. That's what we saw, you know, and very big in size, you know, because we saw it about between feet and 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 uh, f- uh, five and six uh, feet in size, large but it was about 60 or 70 feet away. So you have to think that if we saw it that size at the distance, it must have been very big, okay? I mean, that's you, why you, you also sent me, I remember you saw me, we have, we got three minutes till break, and when we come back from break, we're going to get more into this, but I, mean, I remember a couple of weeks back, you sent me uh, that film, it was a video of, of a giant bird, and you said this could be up to like a football field long or, or more, right? Like th- some of them were, were monstrous in size. What what video? There was a video of like a, a, a bird that looked like a pterodactyl was, that was huge, and it like put its head, head down and then moved its head back up. It was on, it, you had it on Facebook. It was one of the ones you sent me on Facebook. Mm, no, that, that was something that someone sent me. In my, my patient Facebook. Okay. Yeah, is that was you think that was real? Well, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. But the one it was in black and white. Yeah. It, well, everything I saw there makes me believe that it may be it may be real. Okay. Yeah. yeah That's it, when I looked at it. I was CGI, like, whoa! CGI produced an image, you know. So and how? That was how in the United States. How how long do you think how how wide do you think the the wingspan is on on these creatures? Because you said it can lift up a, a car off the ground. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. How how wide do you think the the wings are on this on on a creature like this to be able to lift the the car off the ground like that? They're very wings- big, very big. My opinion is that uh, according to the sizes of pterodactyls, in a, in order to be able to lift in part. A, a car such as the Renault, a, it must have been very large. Okay, I, I speculate in the sense that maybe the the type of creature that that this was was the so-called Quetzalcoatlus type of uh, pterodactyl that was a larger one. Okay. Yeah, and, and I mean, there's there's if you go back into lore too, there's if you even in in. Uh, in, in Central America, they had Quetzalcoatl, which was a, f- a huge flying serpent, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and they worshipped it. So, you know, these, this, this goes back, you know, if not thousands of years, and yeah. um, it could be even millions of years. I mean, th- these creatures were said to be extinct now for millions of years, right? So where could they be hiding that we only see them from time to time and catch a glimpse. I mean, you think they're in the caves in the mountains or with and, Rare, and that leads with the earth? Rarely by day and mostly by night. And but they are, they are being seen everywhere. There are many such uh, sightings in the United States only. 
Okay, and then I, I remember that even in in Cuba, in the island of Cuba, in the Guantanamo Bay, there was a report by a U.S. servicemen there who witnessed two of these creatures flying overhead the base. So it's happening, you know, in many places, not only here, but as, as you ask yourself, where are they coming from? Where do they yeah. hide themselves? You know, they they may be hiding in some caves, as uh, these people said from the town of Manatee that they saw this creature entering a cave there, you know. But where do they come from? That, that's the... Yeah. Uh, and that's what, the are they, and what are they living on? I mean, they can, are they mm -hmm. taking humans? I mean... No, I don't know of cases of humans, you know, but animals, livestock, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I will be back in a few minutes with the great Jorge Martin. And you can find him on Facebook. And do you have any other websites out there, Jorge? Not at this moment, no. Okay, so just find him on Facebook. We have everything linked on there. He puts up stuff daily on his Facebook. Uh, you can find him, you know, right there on my Facebook or on the Para X Radio Network. I have it posted. And this song coming up is called Sonatas by Far Radio Clouds. And we'll be back after this. Spiral out. <laughs> Anywhere. Thanks for making Para-X part of your day. Your source for everything paranormal. Para-X. 
And we're back. My name is Rob Costaldo, and this is the Mystical Spiral Radio. And you can find us at themysticalspiral.com. And we are with the great Jorge Martin. You can find him on Facebook, and you can find him and his information on my website, themysticalspiral.com. And you can also find me on YouTube at Exploring the Ka with host Ra. And, you know, before break, we were talking about these, these flying, almost, you know, petrodactyl petrodactyl type beings that are are huge you know and we have a um a, a few questions in the chat room as well and i wanted to uh they wanted you to, to elaborate jorge on on the cave situation and you know how they said that they saw some this being possibly fly into the cave i mean um the chat room was asking has the cave ever been explored like maybe military gone in there? Has anybody ever, you know, gone really, in there? I really didn't know because they, I knew about this recently, okay? Because I was, as I told you, I was interviewing this uh, family because I'm not a very important UFO sightings, uh, an encounter they had there in Manatee. And during the conversation, this came out. So he told me, you know something that happened from years ago? Uh, I, I seldom talk about it because I know people would say I'm crazy or, or something, you know, but... It really did happen, and he has two, these two other people who were witness to it too, his friends who were, who were in the car. So uh, he told me that uh, uh, he saw the, the creature actually go into this cave, and then the man who, uh, uh, assured them that, the, that they, everyone there in the area had seen it, and it always went in, inside that cave. So but the problem is that uh, this was back in 1978, and in years close to that, uh, to those days, and I, I only knew about this recently, so we don't know, but we're trying to form a group to go to the area and enter this cave and see what's in there, you know, maybe if there's some evidence, uh, let's say, uh, that, that proof that this creature was there, or something like that, you know, or physical evidence, bones, or whatever, see if there's something, you know, really inside of that cave. It's interesting too that you say 1978 because um, this this psychic that I knew he he's passed away now, and um, he, he was a not not really a famous psychic, but he was well known in the area he lived in in California, and he had told me one time back in uh, like 2002 2003, he had told me that he knew the year I was born was 1978, and he had told me that in 1978 these certain these like flying Draco type reptile beings left our planet in that year, and it's interesting that you say that that you saw some that somebody saw something flying in that year because maybe he was right. I mean, you know, who knows? Well, I, I can tell you this: uh, in the case of Puerto Rico, both type of creatures, you know, the gargoyle-like type of creatures and this pterodactyl type of creatures, have been seen. At the same time, in different areas of Puerto Rico, back in the 70s, there were many sightings of these uh, gargoyle-type creatures in different parts of the island, you know. So they this... tend to let themselves be observed by the people. They, they get on top of the houses, you know, rattle the, 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 the houses. Uh, they want to be seen. They want to attack anyone, but they, they want to call the attention of the people. That's what I think, you know, according to their behavior. Yeah, uh, and this has been going for many years, and both side, uh, both side type of creatures have been witnesses all over the island. Yeah, so you think this is this is all the same creature, or and this is the same creature that the one that flew into the cave is the same creature that your son encountered? No, no, the the, the one that entered the cave that this incident that happened in Manatee was more like a pe- flying, was more like a pterodactyl, a flying pterodactyl type. Yeah. Okay? What my son saw was like something like a gargoyle. Yeah, yeah. So and, these are two different many creatures. Many other people and policemen have seen them too. But this is interesting, uh, Ra. Uh, there was a, an incident some years ago in the area of the rainforest, in the Junca rainforest in the east of Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, which is well known for many incidents, uh, alien, ET, UFO-related incidents there, encounter with weird creatures. Uh, human creatures, uh, weird animals, etc. Uh, but I have this family, the Rivera family from Rio Grande, who live close to, to the rainforest. 
and they witnessed on one occasion about six of these gargoyle type creatures flying out Whoa. in the area of the rainforest. Okay, about six different sizes flying oh away God. from the rainforest toward the nor northwest of the island of Puerto Rico. And it, this is interesting because there's another thing there that interests you. We have talked about this before. It is these dimensional portals that are appearing in Puerto Rico. Okay? Uh, there in the rainforest is a, a, an area that is very important. It is an area located between three uh, of the biggest mountains there, a Junque Mountain, a Mount Britain Mountain, and El Cacique Mountain. There is a very uh, deep area there between these mountains that, and this has been witnessed by policemen, by forestry service personnel, by biologists of the forestry service and the University of Puerto Rico who have been working there in the forest. Uh, in some occasions, many people have seen when this area uh, illuminates, okay, with very bright, light, reddish, uh, fuchsia, orangish type of hue colors of light. Whoa, like uh, a mist? And, and then when they, when, they have been, when they have been there, they saw, they see that this area there disappears, dematerializes, okay? And very deep down underground, they see like, like, a, like a city. Many buildings, structures illuminated with lights, etc. And flying saucers go into this place or come out from this place. And they saw, they, they have seen also uh, gray type beings going into this area, to this opening or coming out from it. And then everything closes again and disappears. And everything oh is normal God. again. And I, I is think it's... Is coming out from there too? It's possible. Uh, do you know what a puka is? No, but I, you 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 had men mentioned this uh, puta, right? P O O. Yeah, yeah. Okay, many of the things that happen in the rainforest and in other forests of Puerto Rico uh, are very similar to what is described in the fairy folk tales, you know, and uh, uh, let's say like like elves and things like that. Okay, because we're dealing with different type of creatures here. Okay. So it's like uh, a puka, P O O K A S, P O O K O K A S. Okay, yeah. a puka is, according to the Irish uh, beliefs in the elves and fairies and that type of that sort of thing, is a, according to them, negative type of entity uh, that tends to be uh, malignant to human beings. But uh, in the rainforest, uh, there are some creatures. And I was surprised when I saw this and heard this from, from the forestry service personnel people there. Uh, several of them had talked to me, and they told me that whenever they go very deep to one of the deepest parts of the jungle there in the rainforest, uh, they have encountered these creatures, this strange creature there they call croppies, because they don't know what they are. Okay? So they call them croppies. And uh, the description is like an animal about three feet tall, that looks like a blend between a cat and a, and a, and a, and a bunny, okay? Whoa. And uh, with reddish, brownish hair, very how, coarse hair. How big? And some, uh, about three feet tall. But it, they say it looks like a blend between a, ca a cat and a, and a bunny. And uh, a rabbit, they would say. Yeah. And with big reddish eyes, okay, a like a grotesque face, but with a gentle behavior. These things come out from holes down at the uh, raíces, at the roots of the big trees there. And they, uh, when they are there in the area, uh, they have to be very, very early in the morning. The, these uh, biologists and forestry service personnel working in this forest, they have been there at, at, at least at 6 o'clock in the morning. So uh, later on, 8, 9, uh, they have the breakfast, and they uh, see the creatures come out, and they throw these sandwiches and every, whatever they have for breakfast, the leftovers, they, they throw at them, and they come out and eat them, and then go back again on the ground. Oh and I, I was surprised to, to, to hear this because the description they gave me is what, what the Irish describe as the pukas, you know, very similar. Yeah. So as, as, the, 
these dimensional portals is in that area. Are this type of creature and many others, okay? There's m much more to this than we have discussed here tonight in the rainforest. Uh, are they coming from that opening, that portal when it opens? And they are remaining here, trapped? We don't know. That's very interesting, and, and I, I would love to hear even more about this rainforest. I mean, that that's that's so crazy. I mean, ha, have tribes ever reported people going missing into these portals, like these, these portals opening up and somebody stepping into and well, disappearing? People have disappeared in the rainforest, you know, but we can prove that one thing has to do with the other, but people have disappeared, their own children and everything. And I, I think this is related to Inner Earth, or what they call Agartha, and I've been doing so much research on this, and I think it's even some of these beings are what the lore is of the Fae, and the fairies, and, and gnomes, and, and all these types of beings. I think that's where they're coming from, these interdimensional portals, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And as you, as you may know, the Taino Indians used to say that the good gods sleep in the rainforest in El Junque. Yeah, the, the okay. Taino Indians are the tribe from Puerto Rico, right? Yes. So maybe they knew about this, okay? That's what I believe now. They I think knew they knew, for sure. Presence there, and there was some type of communication between these beings and, and the Indians. I think so, too. And, and they always have lore of, of these uh, these beings, you know, and, and how they're almost like uh, demons in a way. that they're, they're tricksters. They like to play games with, with people, and, and people get with lost. Communications, you know. Yeah. The behavior of these Many of the so-called uh, great type human uh, creatures that have been seen there in the rainforest uh, like to play games with people, okay? Mind games or play games with them because they are very fast. Okay? They can move at fantastic speed, you know, from one place to the other around the witnesses and tend to play around with the people, you know? Yeah, that's what I've said. Yeah, that's the same thing I've, I've said in, in certain YouTube videos I've made, that they... they they can move so fast. They even appear to have like I think that's that's what the they say in some lore that the fairies that they they can move so fast around the jungle and in certain areas that they they appear to have this glowing wings, but it's just because they're moving so fast from one place to the next. And they, and they so can, who knows? Maybe we're talking about the same phenomenon here. One, yeah. of, uh, one Both things are the same. Have the same origin. Who knows? As Jack Palace says. Yeah, you never know. And you know the the Etruscans is where my family gets a lot of their lore and history from. And they they talk about, you know, these being coming from, you know, the mountains in Volterra and, and how they have a, a, some kind of portal that goes in beneath the ground and that these beings would come out and some of them would wear red caps on their head and they would play tricks with people. And, and some of them, they, you know, would actually, like... Uh, make people appear on the other side of the mountain or in a dimension if they saw mm -hmm. you know um if they saw somebody filled with misery then then the person would appear and play some kind of game with them and put them in some kind of other world where they can become a king or something like that some crazy like trap dimension there's the, all these lores of the etruscans going into the mountains and having these experiences with these being coming out of some kind of portal mm -hmm. that's correct that's correct so um so i would also What's that? Go ahead. No, go ahead, I, that, go ahead. I was uh I was also like uh wondering too about you had you had um some types of creatures that that looked like they were um saurian in type that were some you said almost a mile long or something. Some of them were like really huge. I don't know if that was you who told me that or somebody no, told me that. That wasn't that wasn't me. <laughs> Thought it was you that taught me that, but it, either way, I mean, if these beings are, are able to pick up cars and and lift a car off the ground, then they they must be monstrous in size, and, and you know, to be able to pick a car off the ground. And um, this one must have been big because it lifted the car on three occasions, you know, not too high, you know, but anyway, it lifted the car, so it, it was able to to pick up, you know, the. Uh, the weight of the car, you know, and pick it from the road. What do you think the Jersey Devil is? Do you think the Jersey Devil is 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 something like this, or do you think it's something all the, altogether different? It may be something like this. Okay, right now, uh, maybe you know about this already, but these same type of sightings of the gargoyle type creatures are being seen uh, by many people in Chicago and in Pennsylvania. Okay, you check it out. 
you you'll see many reports currently uh, being made uh, about this type of sightings all over the area in Chicago, Pennsylvania, etc. So hey, uh, are they reporting why seeing? Is, uh, why, is, why is this happening all over the all over the, the this this war in, in the Caribbean in the United States? Why? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, are they reporting in Chicago? Are they reporting portals opening up as well, like something opening up, and then, or it's just I, I, exciting? In that sense, I don't know. I don't know. But they say the same thing that we discussed here already, that they seem to be uh, as if they wanted people to see them, okay, to attract the attention of the people, and and see them. For let me ask unknown. you. Let me ask you a question. Since since your son had this encounter and saw this being has his life changed at all has he been has he been uh really consumed by it has it is it always replaying no. in his head no no uh, i know i know what you act is because of the mothman type of things you know that many people say when whenever the mothman appear bad things happen afterwards to the people who witness it but no not here it hasn't happened and, and he has, thank god it didn't happen to my son either yeah thank god i was wondering if if like since then if anything has changed in in his life or if he's been like kind of plagued by the thoughts of this thing no no he saw the creature and that's it you know they all saw it they are uh, aware that they something they saw something uh, incredible but they know it's real he told me uh, that papa he says uh, I know it is crazy, but we all saw it. You know, it was yeah. there. It was right in front of us, six feet away from us. You know, we all saw all the details, everything. It was physical. It was there. You know? and, it, and it's crazy because too, it, the thought never. I mean, even though he was armed with guns, you know, he was. It was so crazy that he couldn't even. The thought never even no. occurred to pull his gun. They wouldn't. They they couldn't move. They just remained there, staring at the creature, <laughs> and the creature was staring at them. And after a couple of minutes, they just flew away very fast. Yeah, and so that, that's what that's when they saw that the animal dead in the floor, okay, of the ceiling that it was eating was a cat. I wonder if they took that animal um, and took samples to see if they find some weird DNA there. No, no, because the, the their superiors told them to leave everything just like that. No, they didn't say anything more or do anything at all because that would affect their careers. Oh my God. Wow. I would have done it if I had known that at the moment, you know. But I knew it afterwards, you know. How, how long after? I, I was discussing all their situations, uh, and he said, Hey, Papi, you know, I saw this, uh, and this is real. We all saw this. Myself with five other uh, fellow policemen of the wow. municipal police. Uh, wow, that is so amazing. And, like, how long, how long after he saw this did he actually tell you? Well, uh, some months ago, after wars, you know. Okay, yeah. So Some there was no. Wars. Did you ever? Did you ever? Um, after he told you that, did you ever research that specific area that he was in to see if other people were seeing that in that area and reporting it? Yes, many people in that same area in San Juan and San Dulce, in the capital here, city of Puerto Rico, had been witnessing that type of creatures. We have a one such encounter in a, in El Condado. There's this company of accountants. Okay, and uh, they came out in the afternoon <coughs> to have a excuse me to have a, some lunch, and they went to the parking lot of the cars and there in the, the company, and all of a sudden they saw this creature standing on a on a on a wall there, you know, in una columna of the wall, uh, and the same description, blackish, uh, just like a gargoyle, big in size, very strong looking at the people, and then it flew away. It flew over the people. They, 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 they believed that they were being attacked, but no, it just flew over there at low, very low over them, and then left. So, and many such incidents, policemen, uh, uh, security guards who worked by night, people driving in the road in Levittown, you know Levittown in Tabaja here in, in, in the north, close to San Juan, uh, people who were driving by night, and this creature came down from the sky and passed in in, in front of their uh, of the windows and the, the windshield. Many many such incidents. The, does the TV ever report anything like that? Is it ever on the news, or it's all kept hush hush? No, there were uh, there was uh, a couple of mentions, you know, 
but uh, whenever they mention it, they did it in a joking way, you know. Yeah. Pretty really yeah. whole situation and laughing away the situation, uh, as they always do here. Okay, these type of uh, reports are uh, never are discussed by the media here, and if they do it. They do it just to to ridicule the whole matter. They yep. don't want people to get involved with this. Yeah. Has has anybody ever recovered a body of ever one of these? Have you ever heard of anybody ever no, having? No, I have never heard such a thing that anyone has a body or something like that. It's interesting. I mean, we only have like five minutes left, so we can't really get too much into anything else. But I I did last time we had you on. I did want you to touch about that. Um, the base, that military base, and some of the activity that's been happening all these years, you know, near the military base out there. Um, you know which one I was talking about? Which one? It was like a military base in Puerto Rico that that you wanted to bring up last time that we didn't get to. Uh, the, the situations uh, pertaining to the Roosevelt Road Naval Station? Yes, yes, yes. That's, that was closed. Uh, it's not longer active, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, it was closed uh, years ago, yeah. It was closed years ago, but uh, it was very close to the uh, Junker Rainforest that we always mention. Yes, that's And the to one. the Vieques Island. And uh, many UFO incidents happened there in the base, and they were related to the situation in the rainforest and in Vieques. So there do you was think even, that... And we've we found this out. We made an investigation, a research in year 1999, 2000, uh, after uh, something happened during Vieques and began the struggle for the people of Vieques that wanted the U.S. Navy to leave the area uh, and release their island so they could be, live, you know, freely and etc. without any problems because the island was being used to, uh, for military exercises and and bombing, etc., etc. Uh, but we went down there to uh, investigate the incident that were happening and the struggle the people had with the U.S. Navy, and we found a very, very incredible scenario. Uh, the U.S. Navy, after all we uh, compiled there with the people, policemen, common citizens, uh, uh, the island community, uh, uh, municipality government, uh, Fishermen everywhere. Every, everyone there had seen UFO encounters, had encounters with beings, UFOs coming out from the water, going to the water, landing in, in the areas occupied by the U.S. Navy bases. And we found out that the U.S. Navy had there a secret contact program with UFOs and aliens. Whoa. Large, large flying saucer craft landed in the area that was restricted uh, for the bombing exercises. That was the excuse. And uh, huh. whenever this, this huge craft came down and landed there, the Puerto Rican uh, security guards uh, and the low-level security guards from the U.S. Navy at the site were ordered to leave the place at once. Only high-level officers from Ruby Rose Naval Station remained there. What happened afterwards, no one knows. But they remained there, and they were going to do something with whoever was on, on board of those crafts, you know. And the oh people were ordered not to talk ever about what they had seen. But eventually they did, you know, because they felt, they felt, you know, they felt that the Navy wasn't fair with them because they were exposing them to a lot of very bad things uh, due to the, to the materials, uh, using the bombs, etc., and things they experimented with there. And oh. many of the guards were very sick and were dying. So they... Talk. They open themselves, and they, we have to say this because it is true. It's happening, and uh, there's contact. Something is going on, and also they have this uh, radi radion uh, over the horizon radar system there in the southern part of the island of Vieques. And in many occasions, people see there uh, large flying saucer type craft landing next to where the antenna ray is. Okay. And many such incidents, aliens, great type aliens coming out from the water, from the sea, and going into the lagoons in Vieques, and coming out from the lagoons and going to the sea and disappearing underwater. Many such things. Wow. So you and can have an idea of the situation. Yeah, that's great. And we'll definitely have you back on again in a month or two, and we can get back into, you know, the base and, and all the, the situations that happen with that. And we are with the great 
Jorge Martin. I want to thank you for coming on tonight, Jorge. And I want to thank my producer, Sarge. I want to thank the Pirate X Radio Network, everybody out there in the World Wide Web, everybody in the chat room. And I want to say once again, Spiral out. Thank you.